Oh Lord, where are you? Why do you delay? There are so many problems in our world. Won't you come and save us? Have you ever cried out to God, wondering what he was doing when the world needed help? The experience of waiting for God, waiting for the promised Messiah, was a common one for the Hebrew people. Back during Advent, episode 6F, if you're interested, one of our guests, Sam Bishton, one of the young people from the Salvation Army's church in Openshaw, Manchester. One of our guests even spoke about the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Ransom Captive Israel. Welcome back to our study of John's Gospel, where today we're concluding our look at the story of Jesus and the wedding at Cana, where we'll see if it has anything to say to us when we call out for God to come and do something about the state of our world. I'm Ian, and this is the Sailor Time to Pause podcast from Plexus Salvation Army, an online church in the UK. Scripture from John chapter 2. There was a wedding in the village of Cana in Galilee. When they started running low on wine at the wedding banquet, Jesus' mother told him, They're just about out of wine. Jesus ordered the servants, Fill the pots with water, and they filled them to the brim. Now fill your pitchers and take them to the host, Jesus said. And so they did. When the host tasted the water that had become wine, He didn't know what had just happened, but the servants, of course, knew. This act in Cana of Galilee was the first sign Jesus gave, the first glimpse of his glory. I will stop and breathe in your presence, just breathe, just breathe. At the end of the story today, we read in John that This act in Cana of Galilee was the first sign Jesus gave, the first glimpse of his glory. A simple phrase, but one whose significance we perhaps miss, that this was the first miracle Jesus ever performed. Not just the first that was recorded and written down, but the first one that he ever performed. Jesus was around 30 years old at this point, And so for 30 years, as he lived and grew in Nazareth, played in the streets as a child, made friends and lost them, helped his mother around the house and his father in the carpentry shop, Jesus Christ had done no miracle, which almost seems like a miracle in itself. In fact, it would seem that some folk didn't believe it. And so in the second century, some wrote fictitious accounts of Jesus' younger life to try to fill in the gap with fanciful and sometimes malevolent supernatural events. These were fake Gospels that the Church rightly rejected as inauthentic and heretical, which were designed to cover up a truth that the authors of those pseudo-Gospels thought to be unpalatable, that sometimes it may seem to us that God is inactive. This simple sentence that John adds at the end of the story about the wedding at Cana tells us that though Jesus was content to live in obscurity until his hour was come, that in all the works of God there is a conspicuous absence of haste, and that sometimes God is at work even when we cannot see it, however hard we may look. Imagine for a moment how God might answer the prayers of people praying for him to come into the world throughout history. What might he say to them? For every day from the foundation of the world until the day Mary gave birth in that Bethlehem stable, the reply would be, I am coming soon. Get ready. Though, of course, exactly how to translate that word soon from the lips of an eternal God into our human understanding of time is not easy. But the reply to the plea, come into our world, was still, I am coming, get ready. The reply to that question today is different, and it has been ever since the first Pentecost. The answer is, I am in the world by my spirit. Look around you. Look at my people, the church, my body. I am with them and within them as they gather and minister and serve. Look beyond their individual human imperfections and you'll see me, and you'll discover that they are now commissioned and ordained to be my hands and feet and voice. But how would God have answered that plea that he come into the world during those 33 years between times? For the three years of his ministry, starting from the moment at Cana, The answer is perhaps quite obvious. God's answer is, I am here. Just look over there. Look at that man preaching on that hill. Look at that man healing that chap with leprosy. Look at that man feeding the crowd. Look at that man carrying a cross. That man is me. I am here. But what is the answer God would give during those 30 years between Bethlehem and Cana? 
when someone asks, God, won't you come into our world? It needs your help. The answer is, I think, a challenging one. I am here, but I need you to take it on trust. I am here, but even if I pointed myself out to you, you wouldn't see me. Remember what I said through Isaiah, that I will have no beauty or majesty to attract you, nothing in my appearance that you should desire me. I will be, for a time, just a growing tender shoot until the time for my glory to be displayed, and your salvation will then be revealed. I am doing no great miracles yet, but still I am here. Be patient, the time is not yet ready, the hour has not yet come, but have faith. The answer to your prayer is provided even though it is not yet revealed. That's the unpalatable truth that the fake gospels try to eradicate, because that answer, that we simply need to have faith, is not the answer we ever want for our prayers. We don't want to be told to have patience. We want to be presented with the answer we want in the way we want and at the time we want. We don't want to be patient. We don't want to be told that the answer is provided, yet not yet revealed. Because in our humanity, we always want the answers now, and we want to see them now. But with the simple sentence, This act in Cana of Galilee was the first sign Jesus gave, the first glimpse of his glory. John points to the 30-year silence and tells us that sometimes God is at work in ways that we could not see or would not understand even if he stood us right in front of them, grabbed our head and pointed our eyes at what he was doing. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, beyond our comprehension, and we simply need to take it on faith. The song that I've chosen for this podcast reflects on this exact experience of trying to live the life of faith when we can neither see nor understand what God is doing. So, as it plays, pay attention to these beautiful lyrics and be encouraged to trust in God that he has answered your prayer, even if he has not yet revealed the answer. <laughs>